For today's lesson, we will be discussing about angles formed by secants and tangents. From the past lessons, we already discussed what is a tangent and it is defined as a line that intersects the circle at exactly one point. So before we proceed with the discussions of the new theorems, let's define first what is a secant. Second line is a line that intersects the circle at exactly two points. So example, you have circle O. Now you have here line CD. So we have line CD which is a second line. If you will notice, this line CD intersects the circle at exactly two points. First, is we have point C, the second point of intersection is point D. So again, when we say second line, it should intersect the circle at exactly two points. So the first theorem is theorem 112, which is the intersecting secants or tangents exterior theorem. If a tangent and a secant, two secants, or two tangents intersect in a point on the exterior of a circle, then the measure of the angle formed is equal to one half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. So in this theorem, there are three cases. First is we have tangent and a secant, two secants, and two tangents. Now the angles formed by the following, for us to get the measurement of that is, just have to get half the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. Okay, so here we have case number one, which is combination of a secant and tangent. Now for the secant, we have CA, segment CA, and for the tangent as we have segment BA. So segment CA is a secant since there's two points of intersection, point C and point D. Whereas segment BA is a tangent since there's only one point of intersection which is point B. Now these two, they intersect at an exterior point which is point A and they created an angle which is angle CAB. Now if we want to get the measurement of this angle CAB, what we will do is we have to get half of the difference of the measures of the intercepted arcs. So what are the intercepted arcs of this angle? First is we have here arc DB and the other one is the larger arc which is arc CB. Now again, to get measurement of the angle CAB or the angle formed by the secant and the tangent, so we have to get half the difference of the measurement of the two intercepted arcs, which is arc CB and measurement of arc DB. So case number two or the second one is we have here two secants. So the secants are we have segment DE and segment RE. Now again, same case with the first one, they intersect at an external point which is point E and there's an angle formed which is angle DER. Now to get again measurement of angle DER, you have to get half you half of the measurement of the difference of the two intercepted arcs. So first is we have SB, okay, that's the first intercepted arc, and the larger one which is arc DR. So these two arcs. So one half times measurement of arc DR, the larger one, minus measurement of arc SB, which is the smaller arc. So last for case number three, here we have two tangents. So we have AG, segment AG, and 
segment TG. Now, they intersect again at an external point, which is point D, and there's an angle formed, which is angle AGT. Now, to get measurement of angle AGT, so it's the same with the previous case, so we have here two intercepted arcs. So first, the smaller one, which is arc AT. And then the larger one, this arc, which is arc ART. Now, measurement of angle AGT is equal to 1 half times measurement of the larger arc, which is arc ART minus measurement of the smaller arc, which is arc AT. So again, um, with the three cases, so to get the measurements of the angle, all you have to do is subtract first the measurements of the two intercepted arcs and then get half of it. So this happens if um, the tangents or the secants intersect at an exterior point, okay, or the point outside of a circle. Next is we have theorem 113, the tangent point secant theorem. So this states that the measure of an angle formed by a tangent and a secant drawn at the point of contact is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. So there's only one case here, so tangent and a secant. So we have here segment AB and segment RE. So AB is the tangent and then RE is the secant. Now notice that the point of intersection of the two is actually the point of tangency of the given tangent. Okay, so you have to remember that. The two must intersect at the point of tangency, okay, or this one, their common point on the circle. Now, there are two angles formed. First is we have this angle, angle ERB, and the other angle is on the other side, which is angle ERA. Now, to get the measurements of this angle, so measurement of angle ERB, what we will do is just get half the measurement of its intercepted arc. So, with ERB, its intercepted arc is this arc right here, which is arc ER. So, to get measurement of angle ERB, you just have to get half the measurement of its intercepted arc, which is again arc ER. So on the other hand, if you want to get measurement of angle ERA, which is the angle on the other side, then it's the same case. So this time, the arc, the intercepted arc is the larger one, which is e e d r. So get half of it again. So measurement of angle ERA is equal to half the measurement of its intercepted arc, which is e d r. Now, let's apply the theorems and answer some exercises. So, find the value of x. So, with this one, so this is x, or x is equal to the measurement of an angle, which is angle CAE. So, we're actually looking for measurement of an angle, which is angle CAE. Now, if you will notice, this angle is formed by two secants. We have AC. And then AE. Since there is a point of intersection which is an exterior point which is point A. Now, to get measurement of angle CAE, since this is formed by two secants, what we will do is get half of the measurement of the difference of the intercepted arcs. So we have measurement of arc CE minus measurement of arc BD. Now, since we already have the measurements, all we have to do is to substitute. So, one half of 
So arc CE, so this one, this arc, that is 140 degrees minus BD, which is the smaller arc here, and that is 80 degrees. Then simplify. So we have one half times 60 degrees. Get half of 60 degrees, and the answer is 30 degrees. So measurement of angle CAE is 30 degrees, or you can also say that X is 30 degrees. Okay, so we applied here the theorem 112. Okay, last is... Um, let's try to find the measure of angle ABC, so this angle right here. So find the measure of angle ABC if measurement of arc BDA is given, which is 250 degrees. So we know that angle ABC is formed by a tangent, which is BC, and a secant, which is AB. So we will apply here theorem 113. Now, to get measurement of angle ABC, what we will do here is just get half the measurement of its intercepted arc. So, in this case, the intercepted arc is arc BDA. So, this one, this arc right here is the intercepted arc. So, get measurement or half the measurement of arc BDA. Now, since we know the measurement of angle BD or arc BDA, just substitute, so that's 250, get half of it. So, measurement of angle ABC is equal to 125 degrees. And that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the angles formed by tangents and secants. And see you next time.